Important question for RGPV exam for analysis and design of algorithm notes are in comments. Q1. Explain divide and conquer techniques. Divide and conquer is a problem-solving technique that involves breaking down a complex problem into smaller, more manageable sub-problems, solving them independently, and then combining their solutions to obtain the final result. The technique gets its name from the two main steps it follows, divide, and conquer. Here's a breakdown of the steps involved in the divide and conquer technique. 1. Divide. The first step is to divide the problem into smaller sub-problems. This is typically done by breaking the problem into two or more similar sub-problems that are easier to solve. The goal is to reduce the complexity of the problem by breaking it down into smaller, more manageable parts. 2. Conquer. Once the problem is divided into sub-problems, the next step is to solve each sub-problem independently. This can often be done recursively, meaning that each sub-problem is further divided into even smaller sub-problems until they become simple enough to be solved directly. 3. Combine. After solving the sub-problems, their solutions are combined to obtain the solution to the original problem. This step involves merging the results obtained from solving the sub-problems and applying any necessary additional operations to obtain the final solution. The divide and conquer technique is particularly useful for solving problems that exhibit overlapping sub-problems, meaning that the same sub-problems are encountered multiple times during the solution process. By breaking the problem down into smaller parts and solving them independently, divide and conquer can often provide an efficient solution by avoiding redundant computations. A classic example of the divide and conquer technique is the merge sort algorithm, which follows the divide, conquer, and combine steps. In merge sort, an array is recursively divided into smaller sub-arrays, each of which is then sorted individually. The sorted sub-arrays are then merged together to produce a sorted final array. Q2. Define big O with example. Big O O notation is used in computer science and mathematics to describe the asymptotic behavior or growth rate of an algorithm's time complexity or space complexity. It provides an upper bound on the worst case performance of an algorithm in terms of the input size. In big O notation, the letter O is followed by a function that represents the upper bound of the algorithm's time or space complexity in terms of the input size. The function can be a constant, a variable, or a combination of both. For example, let's consider a simple algorithm that finds the maximum element in an array. Backquote, backquote, backquote. Function find max, array. Max element equals array, 0. For element in array. If element greater than max element. Max element equals element. Return max element. Backquote, backquote, backquote. In this algorithm, we iterate through each element of the array once to find the maximum element. The time complexity of this algorithm can be described using big O notation as O, N, where N represents the size of the input array. This notation indicates that the time taken by the algorithm grows linearly with the size of the input. Here are a few common examples of big O notations and their meanings. O, 1, constant time complexity. The algorithm's runtime is independent of the input size. For example, accessing a specific element in an array. O, log n, logarithmic time complexity. The algorithm's runtime grows logarithmically with the input size. For example, performing a binary search on a sorted array. O, n, linear time complexity. The algorithm's runtime grows linearly with the input size. For example, iterating through each element in an array. O, n squared, quadratic time complexity. The algorithm's runtime grows quadratically with the input size. For example, using nested loops to compare every pair of elements in an array. O, 2 carat n, exponential time complexity. The algorithm's runtime grows exponentially with the input size. For example, generating all subsets of a set. Q3. Discuss job sequencing problem by an example. Job sequencing problem is a well-known optimization problem in computer science and operations research. It involves determining the order in which a set of jobs should be executed to maximize certain criteria such as profit, efficiency, or completion time. In the job sequencing problem, we are given a set of jobs, each with a specific deadline and profit, or cost, associated with it. 
The objective is to schedule the jobs in such a way that the total profit is maximized while meeting the given deadlines. The problem is typically defined as follows. Given n jobs, each with a deadline and profit. Each job takes a certain amount of time to complete. Each job must be scheduled before or on its deadline. Only one job can be executed at a time. The goal is to find a schedule that maximizes the total profit while ensuring that no job misses its deadline. The job sequencing problem can be categorized into two types. 1. The unweighted job sequencing problem. In this variant, each job has the same profit or cost associated with it. The objective is to maximize the number of jobs that can be completed within their respective deadlines. 2. The weighted job sequencing problem. In this variant, each job has a different profit or cost associated with it. The objective is to maximize the total profit by selecting the jobs that yield the highest profit to cost ratio. To solve the job sequencing problem, various algorithms can be employed, including greedy algorithms. Greedy algorithms are commonly used to solve the job sequencing problem. These algorithms sort the jobs based on their profit or profit to cost ratio in non-increasing order and assign each job to the latest possible slot that satisfies its deadline. This approach ensures the maximum profit within the given constraints. Dynamic programming. Dynamic programming can be used when the job sequencing problem exhibits overlapping subproblems. It involves breaking down the problem into smaller subproblems and storing the solutions in a table to avoid redundant computations. Backtracking. Backtracking can be used to exhaustively search all possible job sequences and determine the one that yields the maximum profit. However, this approach can be computationally expensive for large problem instances. Q4. Explain 8 Queens problem and apply backtracking to solve this problem. The 8 Queens problem is a classic puzzle that involves placing 8 Queens on an 8x8 chessboard in such a way that no two Queens threaten each other. In chess, a queen can move horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, and it can attack or capture any piece that falls on its path. The objective of the eight queens problem is to find a configuration in which no two queens can attack each other, i.e., no two queens share the same row, column, or diagonal. To solve the eight queens problem using backtracking, we can follow these steps. 1. Start with an empty chessboard of size 8 by 8. 2. Begin placing queens row by row, starting from the first row. 3. For each row, try placing a queen in each column of that row. 4. Check if the queen placed in the current column conflicts with any of the previously placed queens. If there is a conflict, backtrack and try the next column. 5. If a queen can be placed in a column without any conflicts, move to the next row and repeat steps 3 and 4. 6. Continue this process until all 8 queens have been successfully placed on the board without any conflicts. 7. If a solution is found, print the configuration of the chessboard with queens placed in non-conflicting positions. 8. If no solution is found, backtrack to the previous row and try the next column until all possibilities have been explored. Backtracking is a depth-first search algorithm that explores all possible solutions by systematically trying each option and backtracking when a dead end or conflict is encountered. In the case of the 8 queens problem, backtracking allows us to systematically place queens on the board and backtrack when a conflict arises, searching for a valid arrangement of queens. By applying the backtracking algorithm to the 8 queens problem, we can find all possible configurations where no two queens threaten each other. Each valid configuration represents a solution to the problem. Discuss in detail NP-complete problems with example.